Hey, good morning guys. I'm going to be replacing my engine mounts today and I figured I'd make a little video about it. I was watching some of the other ones out there and it's kind of a letdown. So I'm gonna to try to show you more of the, uh, the actual information that's going on instead of skipping ahead. Uh, let me show you what I got. Okay, so here you go. These are the new mounts. They're pretty sweet. They're stainless steel. They're made by Oceanic Innovations. Um, they also have these cool little roller bars, which uh, will protect the uh, the engine in the case that the boat were to flip over or like roll, you know, because uh, when you think about it, the way these things work, here's my four new ones here, you know, they're actually, it's just rubber holding the entire engine to the boat, which is kind of insane to me, you know, this bolt at the top here does not go all the way through. It does not attach to the lower piece of metal. These, these pieces of rubber are hot welded on there. And so uh, this new one I've got, which you can see I've already put in the F2 ones. I did those yesterday, and today we're gonna do the two forward ones. These ones actually look a lot better than the F ones. The F ones were looking super rough. And since, uh, you know, they were uh, in such bad shape, and the F2 one, you know, I was just, if you're gonna do two, you might as well do all of them. Kind of like headlights in your car. So my buddy Rocky is a diesel mechanic full-time i'm a uh, marine electrician so this is kind of me doing a little bit something that's outside my field but when you live on a boat you kind of end up doing everything so here i am um, changing engine mounts it's not too big a deal although the crazy part is you actually have to take the weight off the engine in order to lift it up um, the way i'm going to do that is with a little come along i'm going to winch that up i'll show you that and then the other thing i have to do which is kind of intense is i have to take apart the coupler on the engine shaft and take the weight off of that and then we'll also have to realign the engine which is kind of a doozy as well um but uh we'll just see how it goes here and uh if you have any questions or whatever throw them down below and if you got tips as to how i can make this better um i'd really appreciate it all right here we go so here is the coupler that attaches the engine gear to the shaft to the prop all right now i'm going to undo these bolts here first these guys i've already undone these ones right here there's no biggie it's just uh it kind of clamps onto the shaft there once i get these off i will actually not my shaft will no longer be attached to the gear and we'll pull it back a little bit and that'll be a trick to that as well but i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick Okay, so we pulled out those four bolts here. Up in those holes. And uh, now this whole thing is actually free. Um, I can spin them individually. What's gonna be kind of interesting here though is because I have a dripless, uh, this little dude right here, this is like a spring-loaded um, system that keeps water from coming in through the shaft hole. Um, we're not gonna get into that too much right now, but in order for me to uh, to get these to separate so I can do the alignment later, I'm gonna need to pull this back. But since it's under a spring, it's gonna keep shooting forward. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna dive under the boat. I'm gonna put a pair of vice grips. I'm gonna pull the propeller shaft out and put a pair of vice grips on the shaft just so I have enough of a gap here um, so that I can line this back up later. All right, um, by the way, here's another video I looked for out of the, uh, the ones I did yesterday. These guys here, I was not able to put the roll bar bracket on this one right here because, or sorry, this one here, because it was going to rub on the engine right there. So um, that's that, but yeah, here I am in my tiny little engine room. Okay, something I've done here is I've actually taped the ends of my vices, because I'm gonna put this on the propeller shaft and I don't want to uh, have any kind of teeth marks or do any damage to my shaft itself. So just wanted to show that real quick. All right. Um, I just jumped down and swam down. I was able to, uh, using my feet, kick off the boat and actually, you know, kicking off the skeg was actually able to get this vice grip. So I'm gonna go down there and show you that now. I was unable to hold the video camera while doing this. So, uh, yeah, let's go check it out. Okay, so while I was down there on the prop, this little octopus swam up underneath me and I just had to chase him around for a minute. It's a little shaky, 
I'm not wearing flippers and my camera is not set up for stability. <laughs> but then I, uh, I also turned around and this huge school of fish was just having a great time behind me. And so uh, here in the Cayman Islands, I just uh, I figured I'd swim around for a little bit and have a little commercial break before going back to work. There's so many of these guys. I'm freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Bottom of the sea, so happy hour five, guys. Okay, so you can see right there that we now have enough of a gap that's gonna allow me to actually, you know, align this again perfectly. And it actually looks pretty fucking good right now. No issues with the alignment at all. So cool. Um, we'll take a we'll take a gauge out though and check it all in the end. Let's go ahead and change out those forward mounts, and that'll be another. Okay, so I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put one of my slats, one of these, right here. And I'm going to use that to lift up just the aft part of the engine. I'm not going to lift, uh, or sorry, the yeah, forward part of the engine. I'm not going to change the, the back part there. But what I'm going to do is actually remove this belt. And I'm, I saw somewhere that it's okay to pull from here. So I'm going to put this piece of Dyneema um, around this. And I'll put my come along up there. And we'll see, it should look pretty good, but uh, I just need to get the weight off enough so that I can undo these brackets right here. I'm not planning to lift the engine up so high that I have to undo these right now. Um, because what I'll do is by just doing these brackets, these should just pop right off. I can put the new ones on the bracket, on the original bracket, and then just slide them in, bolt them on, realign the engine, and we should be good to go. You can see there's one on both sides. So here, check it out. This is my new uh, my system for lifting up the forward part of the engine here. I've just got this Dyneema rigged around the crank down here. Come along, follows up. And then using one of my slat boards, I've got it positioned in here with the, uh, the towel. I'm not too worried about this teak because the teak is very, very strong. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna only gonna be lifting it up to have to take the pressure off of these guys here so that I can pop these without having the engine fall back forward and ruin my other mounts. So that's the process here. Let's go ahead and start winching. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a handkerchief right here so it doesn't rub on the engine as we lift it up. But here we go. And you can see as I winch here. All right, I officially have the weight up here on that board and everything seems to be looking pretty sharp. Damn, that guy was stuck. All right, all four bolts have been removed from the bracket. Next thing to do here is pop these guys. That one, and the one back here. That guy.
Okay, sweet. Look at that. It did not drop a hair as we pulled this guy out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this mount on the old bracket, or sorry, put the new mount on this bracket and it'll be good to go. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get these the exact same level. I wanna get this one to match this one. All right, I'm gonna take a lot of time doing this because I wanna make sure it's perfect. Um, I, I'm gonna adjust this in the end a little bit to get, make it align with the shaft. I can save myself a lot of headache by matching these guys up in advance. Okay, I put these guys in partial way so I can still make some adjustments here if I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and put these four bolts back in. All right, everything is snug as a bug now. The only thing I haven't tightened down is this top nut here. It's just hand tight right now. And that's because I might end up adjusting this nut up or down to help with that alignment of the shaft again. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did here. Loosen those bolts, loosen these bolts, pop the whole thing off over here now. Okay, same exact thing. I still have the come along hooked up. She's doing great. All right, I've got the weight off of the brackets. They're okay. both in. Pretty excited. That one went pretty smooth. Uh, it's exactly like the other one, no problems with the cups there. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and lower my uh, engine back into them. And really, I'm just taking the weight off of it again. So, there we go. Just dropped. And it's free. Pretty sweet. Um, so the next shot will be alignment of the shaft. All right, and a lot of that requires me adjusting these nuts on each side, the aft one brackets as well. Until look at this one. I had to use up pretty much all the space here just to match the old one. But uh, yeah, just to make sure everything uh, sits nicely and the the shaft is aligned. Okay, so. Right here on my coupler, I can actually see that there is a bigger gap on this side right here than there is on this side right there. So I've got this guy called a feeler gauge and it basically just checks the tolerance or those little gaps and I can actually measure them. And so what I'm gonna do right now is make some tiny adjustments to the port side of my engine and try to like pinch it back to the right here because I want back to the port side or to the starboard side because I want this to close up a little bit all right once I get this a little bit closer I will uh, start using my feeler gauge some more to really narrow it down one thing I forgot to mention is I gotta move the engine port sides and when I'm doing that I can't just tighten loosen those bolts I actually need to with a little bit of leverage um, cock the engine over to the port side. So using my favorite crowbar here, I'm gonna go ahead and pry it over. We'll see. Okay, so here we are in the engine room again. Um, so I actually didn't have to use the crowbar. I was actually just, just grabbed the engine and kind of pulled it a little to the port inside and it, it just moved. I think it's, you know, my engine's not super huge. It's only like 38 horsepower. So it's probably got something to do with it, but uh, I just kind of nudged it. Again, all of my, um, these bolts here are loose right now and that just kind of makes it possible for me to uh, make this shit happen so all right i'm gonna go ahead and uh play with my little um feeler right gauge away, using this guy right here which is uh definitely one of the thicker ones um i can't shove it in this crack at all right but down below i can actually slide it right in it's hard to see but it's actually inside there so that means i've got an opening at the bottom and it's pinching right now at the top, right? So I need to get it the same all the way around. And so what I'm gonna do is actually lower the forward part of the engine and raise up the aft part of the engine a little bit by adjusting those nuts on the mounts, okay? And just a few turns and trying to keep it equal because I think my port to starboard looks pretty good now. I got that, I feel pretty good about that. I just need to get rid of that little pinch. So that's next. Okay, so using my 24 millimeter wrench and tightening down, or sorry, loosening these these nuts underneath here up and both sides, I was actually able to just lift up the engine, um, the aft part of the engine, and now I've got my, I really like this one, this feeler gauge is uh, 0.254 millimeters or uh, one hundredth of an inch. So when I take this guy now, 
I've got it nice. I can't even get it to get it in this gap here. And a minute ago, I could get it in the gap below, but now I can't even get it in the gap below. And I feel pretty freaking stoked on the tightness of this alignment here. You know, the only thing I'll have to do is make sure that these holes line up with the forward holes, which is no big deal because you can you can still spin um, them separated. But very difficult to do with you with one hand. If I have a second hand here, I can just kind of. So all I'm going to do is put those bolts back in. Then I'm going to put two bolts back in here. Um, this guy here actually has a small hole in it, and I'm going to take some seizing wire, put it through there, and wrap it around this. This is just a little pin, basically, that goes into a notch in the shaft underneath here, and that keeps this whole thing from sliding off, off backwards. So that's that. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. Alrighty, there she is. Now the new hardware install. So you got the seizing wire in there and this little nut wrapped around it. Very, very pleased. Ah, oh, man, it's over. Let's crank it up. Oh my god. I almost forgot. Make sure you dive and remove these or you will uh, you will find out that you didn't really quickly. I think uh, I'm pretty pleased with the whole the whole install. Definitely a little bit of vibration, but that's like the healthy kind, you know, because it's an engine and they vibrate. Way less than the previous uh, amount of vibration. I didn't take a video of it before installing these, but it was freaking crazy. Um, anyway, I'm real stoked and the shaft alignment looks real great. I'll probably check it again in like 100 hours, 50 hours, just to make sure it's not falling out of whack. But uh, thanks for watching, and um, you. See you later. Okay. Oh, hi. Hello, birds. Hi. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know what's going on. Hey, guys. What is that? I don't know what's going on. I have these seeds and they don't even want them. They're not even touching them. They're just hanging out. Sleeping.